But one of the, uh, sto- the, the things that um, one of the things that uh, escalated uh, dying, could, you could say, is uh, the fact that when they begin to see uh, symptoms of COVID, that she was kept in isolation. So when she was kept in isolation, you know, there's nobody to help her, no family members to come in, no one was allowed. Of course, we know that's a good thing. And nobody was allowed to see her. To, all they could do is talk with her through the phone. All they could do is uh, just call her or SMS her and uh, pray for her over the phone, try to encourage her over the phone. But how I many you know it's just different when you are in person with somebody, right? Uh, it's another thing to be on the phone, but it's another thing to be in person with somebody. And we are going to read about a man of God who begins to run and begins to isolate himself. Because one of the dangers of uh, isolating yourself or being alone is it can be very destructive. In a message I've entitled this morning, The Ministry of Loneliness. The Ministry of Loneliness. I was reading an article that they say uh, every hour in Japan, three men die uh, just alone. In other words, they are isolated. Nobody there with no one else. In fact, they, they say it's older people mostly who just end up dying They're with no one else, under no one's care, and they end up losing their lives. So loneliness is a very big uh, uh, influencer in our lives, a big factor. It can deteriorate your health, according to some health experts. But I want to read through the Bible, 1 Kings 19 from verse 1. The Bible says, Ahab complained to Jezebel about everything that Elijah had done, especially the part about him killing all the prophets of Baal with a sword. Jezebel sent a messenger to tell Elijah, May the gods do the same to me and even more if tomorrow about this time I haven't made you like one of those prophets you had killed. In other words, Jezebel is telling Elijah, look, I am going to kill you. In simple words, you say, you know what? May the gods do to me the same way, amen, if I don't do to you what have happened to those prophets. Now Elijah was terrified, so he got up and ran to, for his life to Beersheba which is part of Judah, and left his servant there, and ran for a day's journey deep into the wilderness. He found a juniper tree and sat down under it and prayed that he could die. He asked God, enough, Lord, take my life, because I'm not better than my ancestors. Then God told him, uh, then he, he laid down and went to sleep under a juniper tree, and all of a sudden there was an angel who kept Uh, grabbing him and telling him get up and eat the ministry of loneliness now loneliness affects everyone in all ages okay whether you're young getting older if you are not surrounded by people you are going to have this feeling of um, uh, loneliness you are going to feel sad and it's a very serious issue we're going to look at some of the signs of loneliness some of the signs that show that the person is lonely number one what we need to understand is loneliness is not about you being surrounded by people you can be staying with people every day and still feel lonely here is elijah if you read down the chapter god says uh, there are many men or there are many people that still worship that still love me but elijah is saying these words i alone am left but we just read elijah left his servant and he kept on running he kept on going um, amen so loneliness is not about being with people loneliness is not about being uh, around a lot of people amen you can feel lonely even when you are are amongst a lot of people, even in a crowd of people that you speak to. can be around a lot of people and still feel unwanted. That's one of the signs of loneliness is when somebody starts to sense or feel unwanted. How many of you ever come to 
a room, a house, um, and all of a sudden you feel unwanted. It's a sign of loneliness. You feel like nobody wants you there. And this is exactly what Elijah is battling. He's feeling like, you know what, everybody's after him. People are chasing him down. That's why he's running. The same thing he's facing. Nobody wants me around. The other is uh, the feeling of uh, emptiness. See, life, as Jesus said, does not consist out of the, uh, in the abundance of the things that we have. You can have a car, the most expensive car, you can have a big house, you can have money, you can have your dream job, um, but at the end of the day, you can still feel empty. You can still feel alone. Amen. And when you feel empty, there is uh, no purpose. And you long for acceptance around for pe from people. You know, that's why people have resorted to things like TikTok and Facebook. You know why? Because the sense of loneliness, there is a sense of emptiness uh, that they want to satisfy. So now you do things not because you like doing them, but you long just to be accepted. You want someone to tell you, you know what, I, I accept you. Somebody wrote an uh, interesting quote. They said, this is how people live life. 5,000 friends on Facebook, but 20 friends in real life, and that times only two friends. <laughs> so this Loneliness goes a long way. But people begin to feel empty. They begin to uh, want to satisfy themselves, want to try and feel this uh, emptiness. Um, amen. And they want people to accept them. You'll find young women growing up, probably the father has never, or the parents, both mother and father, the family have never accepted this child. You see, it's very difficult because uh, if a father and mother, if the role that they play in the community is very important. You never tell this child how much you love them. You never tell your daughter how much how beautiful she is. You never tell your son uh, how proud you are of him. There is going to be some people who are going to take advantage of them. They go in the street and there will be an older tate who will say, Oh, did anybody ever tell you you are so beautiful? And you see this young girl falling in love with this man, simply, amen, although she's with the mother and the father and brothers, there is a sense of emptiness that wants to be filled. And she's getting acceptance from somewhere else. Or this young man, the father never tells him how proud he is of him. And guess what? A group of guys say, you know what, we'll really be proud of you if you hold a gun and stab somebody. So you know what you will do? He will take a knife and he stab people because uh, that's how he can get acceptance from others. So that's where loneliness takes people. And the other is feeling alone. And that is uh, what most lonely people are. Uh, they feel alone. Even though they are with people, there's that sense of always, you know what, I'm alone, I'm on my own. Uh, they don't feel like they can team up with people. And to look at covering up because you see people just want people want to cover up the fact that they are lonely they try to make phone calls smsing people to fill the gap of loneliness but you see making friends and followers on social media does not fill the void of loneliness like i said you can have five thousand friends on on uh, facebook and still be lonely you know, oh, follow my page. You see people, you know, these are social media influencers. Like my page. Like my, uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on this. Follow me on that. And then all of a sudden you go and find this person overdosed uh, and they died because they felt alone. And you wonder, where did this come from? They had so many fans that loved them. They had so many people that loved them. But you see, simply having followers and fans uh, and talking to people online does not cut it. Can cover up, but it won't. The other is uh, people try to cover up loneliness in self-pity. You know what self-pity is? And this is exactly what Elijah is doing. He's running... He's feeling sorry for himself. How many of us say, 
felt sorry for yourself. Don't raise your hands in there. <laughs> you feel sorry. Oh, poor me. The tough times I go through. You see that? That's a sign of loneliness. And this is this, uh, it begins to bring some unhealthy emotions to you. Because self-pity is not a good emotion, right? You're just feeling sorry for yourself, you know, like uh, just want to isolate yourself far from nobody. Oh, it's just me and me alone and nobody's helping me. The tough times I go through, the difficulties I go through. Now I tell you, this can happen to people even while you are living with somebody at home. You can be with your husband or your wife uh, and you feel like you are carrying all the load. And you overlook the load the other person is carrying, right? Feeling alone. So many people, like in Japan, die alone. And this also has a spiritual element to it. Because loneliness is a killer. See, so many people are dying for friendship, but they cannot find it. They want a friend that they can speak to. They are looking for friends that they can lean on, that can take them through their difficult times, that they can express their heart to or share their wonderful achievements during the day, their difficulties. But I mean, they can't find a friend to lean on. I mean, you know, sometimes everybody is so busy. And in their own bubble, when they walk, just bump each other, boom, get out of my bubble, I'm, I'm, I'm alone. Everybody lives such busy lives. But see, people are looking for friendships because they are dying alone. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, two are better than one. Because woe unto him that walks alone, for when he falls down, he has no one to pick him up. But if there are two, when one falls down, um, the, the other one can pick the other one up. Yeah. It says two are better than one because when two lay in a bed, uh, they can warm each other in the cold. I don't know, it's winter time. But that doesn't mean now, you say, brother, you say, oh, pastor, I said that we must look for people to go lay to warm ourselves. Sister, can you come in? <laughs> yeah. It says two are better than one. The other text says, one will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. You see the multiplication of unity, how powerful it is and how powerful it can be. Many people today, they lose a sense of a social life. I mean, you know, in, when you socialize with people, the more you socialize, you will know what to say and how to behave among people. But today we have uh, this, we have uh, people who do not know how to behave with other people. They don't know how to live, basically. You can say it's like when they open their mouth, the joke they make is like, "Whoa, what did you just say?" Or the way they behave, they just, you know. People can, some people can be weird, right? You are just standing in public and you just see you are talking to somebody, they are lifting up their shirts. Like, what's going on? <laughs> but you see, people lack a sense of um, socializing, how to live among other people. Or the famous African word, Ubuntu, speaking about togetherness, right? But some people lack all these things. They do not know how to live with other people. All I care about is me, I, and myself. There can be food in the, on the table. I, you know, I can bring some nice KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I put it there. I say, you know what? Uh, first come, first go. Everybody will grab and you won't mind about another person. Because you lack a sense of how to live with other people. Have you ever seen some people that you are with somebody, you, you are with a person, right? We are together in the room. With, but you know, hey, yeah, oh, okay, yes. Uh, 
They pay no attention to somebody. They can they are so attached to a person on the phone, then you will send it next to them. They can't just put their phone aside and say, you know what? I'm here now. Let me let me focus on you. Let me give you all the attention. No, no, no. Yes, sir. How are you? I, what did you say? You ask them a you ask them a question, they are saying, yes. It's like, oh. What do you mean by yes? Oh, ah. I was distracted by the phone. Because we lack how to live with other people. Why? Because we have been so much in isolation. We have uh, been so lonely and alone. And now you begin to lack a sense of uh, being social with other people. You ever seen some people, you, you walk with them, for example, from, uh, from OK all the way to Dongeru. You're just walking, footing home. They are just on the phone. You're walking with them. Hello. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's frustrating, right? The whole way. Oh, so you are saying. And, I, and to me, it always bugs me that how can you be so attached and so close to somebody so far, but to people that you are living with every day, you can't even talk with them. You know, I don't know about you, but you see, when I moved from Tsumem to Koretas, People here became, of course, I know that this is my family, right? I'm not saying, nah, I cut them off. No, no. But these people became my family and my friends. And I have to be more attached to them because they are here, right? So I, I speak to people. In fact, you know, every person that I see, most of the people I know them because why? I do my best to speak with them, to know their name, so I can be able to connect with people. But it's so funny how some people know my best friend lives in UK. In UK, do you know them? No, I don't know, but all I know is he's having two kids. Okay, but do you have any, I don't have any best friends here in Korihas. No, 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 no. My best friends live in Vinduk. See, this is weird. But it's because of this loneliness, people have been pushed into a place whereby they resort to just having friends that they don't even know. But around them, they have nobody. You know, I, I, I don't, uh, you know, of course, I, I call my family back home, but, you know, I'm not so attached to them today, tomorrow, next day, you know, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm just calling. But I don't have any friends here. See, make friends who you are. You know, that's why some people, when they're in trouble, they don't even know who to call because you don't have friends. And I tell you, you, you are going to need help. And you are going to need somebody. I tell you, you know, I remember there had been some difficult times sometimes with, uh, with my car, you know. I, and actually, it was the battery I got. I bought a battery. I don't know what this guy is doing with the battery. And this battery was, uh, it, it just stopped. And here I am, I'm stuck. And you will see the amount of people that are coming to stop by trying to assist. Where can we help? What can we do? Can we take you any place? And it's simply because uh, they know me. Now, imagine if they didn't know me. I didn't know anybody. I'm just a lone ranger, like they say. I'm my own man. So I don't need any help. The people will be passing by. Nobody will be stopping. But you see, when you connect with people, say, man, I know you. I'm the let me help you. Simply because you are connecting with people around you. A study shows that lonely people are 50% likely to die prematurely than people with social relationships. 50%, that's huge. You just stay alone. You, and you know, with the, the, this isolation and people being put there, you, you can't be seen by your family. There is this mental stre stress coming upon people. They get depressed. I mean, you know, we are social beings. But somehow, society tries to convince us, you are alone, you, you are fine. You can just be alone without people. No, 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 no. You need people. You need somebody. And without people, it will be very difficult for you to make it. Yeah. But this morning, the encouragement is that you 
are not alone. Even if you feel a sense of loneliness, because remember what I said, loneliness is not about uh, when you just don't have any people. You can be among people and still feel lonely. You can be uh, in a church setting like this, meeting and having friends everywhere. I've seen people like that, right? There was a man, uh, I believe was a CEO of the municipality in Ocho. And this guy committed suicide. And everyone was shocked. They said, man, but how could this guy commit suicide? How? This guy was a people's person. He was a lover of life. He will be, we will be friends with every person, but you see, it goes beyond you just being dancing with people, partying with people, being friends with people. You can still be lonely with all these things. And this is exactly what happened to this man. He, he killed himself and it was a shock to everybody. Nobody saw this coming. And I could see my friends, my colleagues from Ocho, they were contemplating, they were standing in the room. But this guy, I can't believe it. Out of all the people I knew, this guy always loved life. He would be dancing. He had friends everywhere. He was friends with everybody. But this guy is the one who committed suicide. But this morning, the message is, uh, you are not alone. And you don't have to be alone. Sometimes you might feel like you are alone, but you're not alone. Sometimes you might feel like there's nobody there for you, but listen, um, you are not alone. Elijah feels alone, and guess what God does? God comes to send an angel to him to comfort him. He says, Elijah, get up and eat. See, that's how good God is. God understands but you know what? We are uh, we are physical. He didn't say, hey, go, go and pray. <laughs> he didn't say, go to church. Get up and go to church. No, he says, get up and eat something. Because you are hungry. He tells Elijah, Elijah, get up and eat. In other words, uh, he is this angel. is trying to stir up something. He's trying to stir a conversation. And that's where some of us need to get to. We need to start conversations. Not just conversations about things that don't matter, but real conversations about your well-being. This angel saw Elijah, you're not doing well. You need to get up and eat something. Do you have real conversations with your friends? Or is it just, you know, talk about soccer? Yeah! You did you see that goal? Man! Did you see that punch from that box? And man, that was fun. Just politics. But he got into a conversation. I tell you, if you go into a conversation with the right person, you can leave that conversation encouraged, stirred up. I've, I've, I've gone into, you know, even if it's a phone call, I've been so down and somebody rang me up and we spoke we spoke for hours or so, and from there you feel revived, you feel refreshed. Or perhaps with somebody, you just sit down and talk. No, and this is a very interesting thing. How many of you have ever seen husband and wife living in the same home? But they will say, you know what, the problem is we never talk. That sounds weird, right? But husband and wife in the same house almost. Most of the hours of the day, but they're still saying, We don't talk. It's because we don't talk heart to heart. All we do is, Did you cook? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do that? Okay, the, uh, the budget, what do we need to pay? We're not talking. We're not talking. So, getting into a conversation will heal you from loneliness. Opening up to somebody will heal you from loneliness. You cannot just be holding all the, the things in your heart, the, the secrets in your heart that are hurting you, that are eating you up, that are making you to isolate yourself. See, the reason why people isolate themselves is not because they hate people. You know, some people, there's things that they know, but you know what, since I'm bothering so I need to withdraw myself from these people. So they stay far from everyone because I don't want to 
be close to anybody because they feel like people can see what they are going through. So they isolate themselves from others. Some people that will lift you up. You felt alone, but see, God is saying, I'm having 7,000 prophets that have never kissed the field of Baal. Another thing you can do is to build relationships with people. And it's not an easy thing to build a relationship, but it's necessary to build a relationship with other people. Start building one, a friendship. Not just hi, bye. Hello, hello, ha, ha, ha. Okay, bye. Hit not meet again. But build a strong, firm relationship. And have physical contact with people. Of course, we know this COVID. When we want to just fist bump. Just from far. Hello. You know, just, just interact with people. Even if it's from far. Right? Safety first, of course, but then just have that be, be among people. Don't always be alone. Don't always be like it. Don't isolate yourself. Don't be far from people. Be amongst people. This will help you very this will help with uh, the issue of loneliness. Matthew, uh, Hebrews 10, verse 23. The Bible says that, you know, some have forsaken the assembling of, of together of the saints. Here are some people, they have gone astray simply because they did not want to assemble with other saints. But see, whenever you feel alone, you need to understand or you need to be reminded that God is with you. Hebrews 13, verse 5. The Bible says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. See, God is always good to be with you. Again, Jesus said, go and preach this gospel. And behold, I am with you even unto the end of the age. Psalms 27 verse 10, again, the Bible says, when your mother and your father forsakes you, the Lord will adapt you. When you don't have no mother or no father, in other words, uh, this uh, relationship that are foundational to you, when they are not there, guess what? God will become your friend. Just like Abraham was a friend with God. God can be your friend. You can walk with him every day. And God is telling you, listen, you are not alone. Therefore, you need to build a godly relationship. People that can give you godly advice. So Psalms 1 verse 1, the Bible says again, Blessed is a man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, you are blessed when you don't follow ungodly advice. You need counselors, advisors that will give you godly advice. You need godly friends. Because ungodly people are going to give you ungodly advice. <laughs> And you are going to see yourself straying further and further away from God. And that is, amen, God is telling us, just like he told Elijah, listen, Elijah, you are not alone. You might be going through a difficult time right now. You might be going through some depression, some stress, some un unsolved issues, uh, some heart issues, the secrets to your heart that you don't want to tell anybody else. But listen, God is telling you, you are not alone in that you're going through. Don't resort to committing suicide like this man did. You are not alone. And God can minister to you in your loneliness the same way he did to Elijah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hexabar, I close to want to pray. This evening, every head is